Welcome back to the channel all about real estate. My name is Lewis and in today's video we're going to be talking about the top five credit score factors that impact your scores and your ability to qualify for financing. Now as many of you know um, credit scores play a huge role in your ability to secure financing for purchasing a home or even a vehicle and in many cases the credit score actually determines the interest rate along with the terms. So in today's video we're going to go over the top five things that actually impact your score. So um, if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already ready and you like all things finance, real estate, and investing, consider liking and subscribing. And without further ado, let's get right to it. Okay, so up on the screen, I have an article from Experian.com, which is actually one of the credit bureaus. Um, and they're giving us the secret sauce here or the actual information bef behind their actual scoring algorithm here. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and link to this in the show notes if you would like to review the full article, but I've sort of highlighted the key points here. So the number one top item that actually impacts your credit score is going to be the payment history. Um, that's really not a huge surprise there because lenders want to obviously see that you have the ability to pay your bills on time and consistently. So it says here that payment history is the most important ingredient in credit scoring and even one missed payment can have a negative impact on your credit score. Payment history actually accounts for 35% of the FICO score and the FICO score is actually actually the credit score that is used by 90% of the top lenders out there. So this is obviously a really important one. It has the heaviest weight factor. It makes up about 35% of your score. So super duper important that whatever debt that you take out, whether it be credit cards, car payments, student loans, a mortgage, you wanna obviously make sure that you're paying that monthly bill on time. Now, just so you are aware, the credit reporting agencies do not actually report a late payment until something has been more than 30 days past due. Um, in many cases, you have a little bit of wiggle room as far as the credit bureau are concerned, but the actual creditor that you owe that money to may have a tighter period. Um, now, a perfect example of this would actually be a mortgage company. So what happens in many cases is that you would have a payment that is due on the 1st, it is not late until after the 15th, but it's not reported late until after 30 days past due. The downside though is that if you pay that mortgage payment past the 15th, you will actually incur a late fee. So um, I'm just kind of giving you that information as a general knowledge. It's always, always, always best to make sure that you pay the bill on time and in full if you can. That way there is absolutely nothing reported late to these credit bureaus because even one late payment, as it mentioned here in this article, can make a really large negative impact on your score. And that is the heaviest weighted portion of that actual scoring model. Now the number two top factor is actually the dollar amount owed, so your credit usage, particularly as represented by credit utilization ratio. Um, that is the next most important factor in your credit scores. Your credit utilization ratio is calculated by dividing the total revolving credit that you are currently using by the total amount of all revolving credit limits. So let me just give you an example here so you understand what we're talking about here when they're talking about credit utilization. Um, let's say you have a credit card, let's say one credit card, and the credit limit is $10,000. Well, credit utilization will be the amount you owe on that credit card divided by the available balance. And so let's say you only owe $2,000 on that credit card. Um, the available balance is $10,000. That is a 20% credit utilization ratio. That is well under that 30% threshold and that will impact your scores in a positive fashion. Now let's say you were to charge a couple items and the balance were to go up to $5,000 with a $10,000 credit limit. The credit utilization ratio in that case would be 50%. Now you're far above the 30% ratio. That's gonna have a negative impact on your score. All right, factor number three is the credit history length. So the period of time in which you've held credit. So um, the article says here, how long you've held credit accounts makes up 15% of the overall weight of your FICO score. And generally speaking, the longer your credit history, the higher your credit scores are. So let's say you're a little younger, you've never really had credit, you're just in the process of establishing your credit history. Obviously, the history length is going to be hard to establish because it's um, it just takes time. Uh, it takes several years to establish that, um, but it only makes up about 15% of your score. So um, if you're 
Um, let's say you're starting with no credit whatsoever and you're looking to purchase a house. In many cases, when you go to lenders directly, they're gonna wanna see one to three trade lines that are established for at least a 12 month period. So what many people do in this case is they go out and they'll get a secured credit card or a credit card with a very small credit limit. They'll charge a few things, run up a small balance, and then just pay it off in full every single month. It's gonna strengthen that credit profile overall and give you higher scores. Now, item number four is credit mix. I'm gonna read directly from the article here. It says, people with top credit scores often carry a diverse portfolio of credit accounts, which might include a car loan, credit card, student loans, mortgage, or other credit products. Credit scoring models consider the types of accounts and how many of each you have as an indication of how well you manage a wide range of credit products. Credit mix accounts for about 10% of your FICO score. So 10% is a relatively small number in the overall weighted average. This is a tough one because in many cases, I would be an advocate for having very little to no debt at all. Um, you obviously will need to have some sort of established credit history to go out and purchase a, a home or a vehicle, for example, but I wouldn't go out and purposely take out different kinds of credit or different kinds of debt just to meet this credit mix. Um, instead, it's just developed over time, especially if you're a younger person just starting out and establishing your credit, you don't need to go out and get a credit card, a student loan, a car, and a mortgage all at once just to kind of um, kind of fit the bill for this 10% weighted average on the credit mix. Um, instead, just build it up over time and as needed. And um, I would be, um, you know, of course, this isn't financial advice, but for me personally, I'd be an advocate for having less credit, maybe just sticking to some of the basics, just kind of the bare minimum that you need in order to qualify. All right, and then the last one, number five, is new credit. And what they're specifically referring to is the number of hard inquiries that actually hit your credit account. A hard inquiry happens anytime that you're actually applying for something or some line of credit, whether it's a credit card, a car payment, a mortgage, anything like that. So it says the number of credit accounts that you have recently opened, as well as the number of hard inquiries lenders make when you apply for credit, it accounts for 10% of your FICO score. Too many accounts or inquiries can indicate increased risk and as such can hurt your credit score. So um, if you go out and you apply for 10 different credit cards, the odds are um, all of those 10 inquiries are probably gonna drive your credit score down a little bit. Now, there are a couple exceptions to that. Like if you're out shopping for a mortgage and you pull credit a couple times inside of a 30-day period, it may impact your score by a couple points the first time you do it. But generally speaking, those subsequent credit pools done inside of that 30-day time frame really aren't gonna have much of an impact at all. But as a general rule of thumb, you wanna limit the amount of credit that you apply for and limit the amount of accounts um, that you're taking out. That way you can um, maintain an overall higher score and you don't get docked too much on this 10% portion of uh, new credit here. All right, so that is the top five factors that impact your credit score. What did you think of the article? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave your comments below. We would love to hear from you. That is all that I have for you here today. But if you haven't done so already, please consider liking, subscribing, and we'll see you next time.